कोड इलेवन एल जीरो टू दिस इज द असेसमेंट ऑफ लिस्निंग स्किल्स फॉर क्लास इलेवन स्टूडेंट्स द टेस्ट इज बींग कंडक्टेड जॉइंटली बाय द सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ सेकेंडरी एजुकेशन एंड ट्रिनिटी कॉलेज लंडन देर आर फोर टास्क फॉर कंप्लीटिंग द लिस्निंग टेस्ट टास्क वन You will hear five people talk about sparrows and their disappearance. Read the statements below, then listen to the extracts and match each statement A to G to each speaker one to five. There are two statements you do not need. You will hear the recording twice. You now have thirty seconds to read the questions. Task one, speaker one. Did you know World Sparrow Day is celebrated on March twentieth every year, and the movement has been growing from its inception in two thousand ten. We take this bird so much for granted, and a special day for it matters. The event spreads the message of conservation as well as celebration of a common species of birds. It brings together concerned citizens. and conservationists from different parts of the world to exchange ideas on how they can help preserve this humble bird and its habitat speaker 2 oh i love those fearless little birds their hopping and twittering kept me so engaged as a child i remember feeling quite at home in my new home after marriage because the house was full of sparrows There used to be this wedding photograph of my parents that hung from an old nail in the main living room. We had an enchanting little family of sparrows that lived behind that photograph. But now alas, they are not around. Even in our gardens, leave alone our homes. Speaker 3. When I used to manage my grocery store, the sparrows used to be a nuisance. The grains used to be cleaned at the courtyard entrance. You could always find a hungry brown horde diving about, eating whatever they could get at. We had to keep sticks to chase them away. Today, my son runs the store. Grain is mechanically cleaned and packed in shiny polythene bags. There's nothing to find at our shop entrance. Oh, and cities no longer. Have a place for sparrows, you know. Speaker four. I would blame people themselves for the disappearance of sparrows. Our lifestyle has changed so much that it has kept sparrows from living closely with us. We must realize that this bird is one of our oldest companions. It has evolved with us, and anything that happens to it will happen to us too. The house sparrow. actually represents many of the common bird species therefore its conservation will save as much of the familiar biodiversity which shares the habitat of the house sparrow speaker 5 i remember that time clearly i had met with an accident and was laid up in bed with a fracture there was nothing to do but read listen to music or gaze out of my balcony That's when I noticed my tiny visitors. I gave them names and felt I knew them on sight. I captured their mad capers on film and uploaded them on my blog site. It caught people's attention and before I knew it, I became Sparrow Man. Now you will hear the recording again. Speaker 1, did you know World Sparrow Day is celebrated on March 20th every year? and the movement has been growing from its inception in 2010 we take this bird so much for granted and a special day for it matters the event spreads the message of conservation as well as celebration of a common species of birds it brings together concerned citizens 
and conservationists from different parts of the world to exchange ideas on how they can help preserve this humble bird and its habitat. Speaker 2. Oh, I love those fearless little birds. Their hopping and twittering kept me so engaged as a child. I remember feeling quite at home in my new home after marriage because the house was full of sparrows. There used to be this wedding photograph of my parents that hung from an old nail in the main living room. We had an enchanting little family of sparrows that lived behind that photograph. But now, alas, they are not around. Even in our gardens, leave alone our homes. Speaker 3 When I used to manage my grocery store, the sparrows used to be a nuisance. The grains used to be cleaned at the courtyard entrance. You could always find a hungry brown horde diving about, eating whatever they could get at. We had to keep sticks to chase them away. Today, my son runs the store. Grain is mechanically cleaned and packed in shiny polythene bags. There's nothing to find at our shop entrance. Oh, and cities no longer have a place for sparrows, you know. Speaker 4 I would blame people themselves for the disappearance of sparrows. Our lifestyle has changed so much that it has kept sparrows from living closely with us. We must realize that this bird is one of our oldest companions. It has evolved with us and anything that happens to it will happen to us too. The house sparrow actually represents many of the common bird species. Therefore, its conservation will save as much of the familiar biodiversity which shares the habitat of the house sparrow. Speaker 5 I remember that time clearly. I had met with an accident and was laid up in bed with a fracture. There was nothing to do but read, listen to music or gaze out of my balcony. That's when I noticed my tiny visitors. I gave them names and felt I knew them on sight. I captured their matte capers on film and uploaded them on my blog site. It caught people's attention and before I knew it, I became Sparrow Man. You now have 10 seconds to check your answers. Task 2. You will hear two students talking about the tribes of Meghalaya. Read the sentences below, then listen to the conversation and choose A, B or C for each sentence. You will hear the recording twice. You now have 30 seconds to read the questions. Task 2. I've just completed an interesting project on the tribes of Meghalaya. Tribes of Meghalaya? Oh, you mean the Geros, the Ghasis and the Jantias? You know their names. Yes, I visited Meghalaya last summer. Did you? Let me test how much you remember. The Geros have another name for themselves. Do you remember it? Yes, they call themselves Achik Mande. In the Gero language, it means the people of the hills. I visited a traditional Gero village and was fascinated by the curious headdresses. It's an elaborate affair with beads, feathers of the hornbill, bangles and earrings. Yes, I have a few photographs of them in my project. They are such a united tribe, aren't they? Births and deaths are a community event that they all participate in with such fervour. Yes, that's true. The Khasi tribe also has a special name, 
It means seven huts or seven families, isn't it? Yes, they call themselves Henu Trep, which, according to their mythology, are seven of the original sixteen heavenly families created by God, and who were left on earth while the other nine remained in heaven. Interesting. I attended a special Khasi ceremony, where the Khasi men. Wear long sleeveless coats without collars, fastened by knots in the front, and thotis to cover their legs with a decorated waistband. The women wear odd robes that give their body the shape of a cylinder. They even wear a special silver or golden crown with a thorn or crest at the back of the crown that matches the feathers worn on the head of the Khasi men. Oh, you saw them in their traditional wear. How nice! Yes, and I remember the special name for the Jaintias. They are called Na or Sintang. They also claim to have descended from the original seven heavenly families. Yes, I know. All the three tribes follow a matrilineal system, but it's the Jaintias. Who treat the girl child the best? She enjoys the best of education, health, and liberty, and curiously inherits the family property too. And if there are no girl children in the family, they adopt a girl from another family and make her the head of their family. Can you believe that? That's really great. The Jaintias are extremely skilled in arts and crafts. Jewelry, weaving, wood carving, cane and bamboo work, musical instruments—name it, they do it. I know. Talking about musical instruments, music and dance are such an integral part of their culture, isn't it? Of course. Each tribe has its own set of festivals and dances celebrating religious events, nature, and the seasons. When I was there last year, I attended the well-known Shatsuk Minshim festival of the Khasis at Shillong. It's a Thanksgiving dance celebrated in April for three days. Oh, you mean the Shad Viking? How was it? Absolutely colorful and so charged up with music and drums. The final day has the biggest performance with men and women dressed in stunning costumes, dancing to drums and flutes. It was absolutely memorable. I hope you can witness it yourself. I know. I hope so too. Now you will hear the recording again. I've just completed an interesting project on the tribes of Meghalaya. Tribes of Meghalaya. Oh, you mean the Geros, the Ghasis, and the Jaintias? You know their names. Yes, I visited Meghalaya last summer. Did you? Let me test how much you remember. The Geros have another name for themselves. Do you remember it? Yes, they call themselves Achik Mande. In the Gero language, it means the people of the hills. I visited a traditional Gero village. And was fascinated by the curious headdresses. It's an elaborate affair with beads, feathers of the hornbill, bangles, and earrings. Yes, I have a few photographs of them in my project. They are such a united tribe, aren't they? Births and deaths are a community event that they all participate in with such fervor. Yes, that's true. The Khasi tribe also has a special name. It means seven huts or seven families, isn't it? Yes, they call themselves Henu Trep, which, according to their mythology, are seven of the original sixteen heavenly families created by God, and who were left on earth while the other nine remained in heaven. Interesting. I attended a special Khasi ceremony, where the Khasi men wear long sleeveless coats without collars, fastened by knots in the front, 
and dhotis to cover their legs with a decorated waist band the women wear odd robes that give their body the shape of a cylinder they even wear a special silver or golden crown with a thorn or crest at the back of the crown that matches the feathers worn on the head of the khasi men oh you saw them in their traditional wear how nice yes and i remember the special name for the jaintias they are called na or sintang they also claim to have descended from the original seven heavenly families yes i know all the three tribes follow a matrilineal system but it's the jaintias who treat the girl child the best she enjoys the best of education health and liberty and curiously inherits the family property too and if there are no girl children in the family they adopt a girl from another family and make her the head of their family can you believe that that's really great the jaintias are extremely skilled in arts and crafts jewelry weaving wood carving cane and bamboo work musical instruments name it they do it i know talking about musical instruments music and dance are such an integral part of their culture isn't it of course each tribe has its own set of festivals and dances celebrating religious events nature and the seasons when i was there last year i attended the well known shatsuk minshim festival of the khasis at shillong it's a thanksgiving dance celebrated in april for 3 days oh you mean the shad viking how was it absolutely colorful and so charged up with music and drums The final day has the biggest performance with men and women dressed in stunning costumes dancing to drums and flutes. It was absolutely memorable. I hope you can witness it yourself. I know. I hope so too. You now have 10 seconds to check your answers. task 3 you will hear a speaker discuss an unusual career change read the questions below then listen to the talk and choose four of the options a to g which are correct write the correct letters in the blank boxes you will hear the recording twice which four of the following statements are true you now have 30 seconds to read the questions task 3 good evening not many of you would believe my career path and how i am where i am like all my peers i took the tried and tested path my career as a management professional lost its appeal in no time mundane jobs with zero challenge found me terribly restless it was while i was with my dog one evening that i suddenly thought of exploring avenues in the pet industry i came across an organization that not only offers canine training to those interested but also provides services to owners of pets i learned about the fascinating world of behavior training i had to interact with different dogs and apply what i learned in my theory classes it was such a challenge but i knew i had found my true calling I soon decided to start my own organization and Pets in You was born. From one client or two a day, I now attend to over 10 or 12 clients a day. 
it takes about six months to a year to make a name in the market. Word of mouth advertising works best for my kind of work, but efficient social media advertising also helps. I handle everything myself, from client visits to logistics and planning to actual dog training. You must be self-driven if you are an entrepreneur. I advise my clients on behavior modification, aggression consultation, and even pet travel requirements when owners go on a holiday. Every day brings new challenges as no two dogs are alike. Dogs are creatures of emotion and need to be handled with great sensitivity. My biggest challenge is to teach owners how to communicate with their pets. And the joy of seeing well-bonded pets and owners is unparalleled. It was good I listened to my instinct and opted for a career change. There is no looking back for me now. Now you will hear the recording again. Good evening. Not many of you would believe my career path and how I am where I am. Like all my peers, I took the tried and tested path. My career as a management professional lost its appeal in no time. Mundane jobs with zero challenge found me terribly restless. It was while I was with my dog one evening that I suddenly thought of exploring avenues in the pet industry. I came across an organization that not only offers canine training to those interested, but also provide services to owners of pets. I learned about the fascinating world of behavior training. I had to interact with different dogs and apply what I learned in my theory classes. It was such a challenge, but I knew I had found my true calling. I soon decided to start my own organization and Pets in You was born. From one client or two a day, I now attend to over 10 or 12 clients a day. It takes about six months to a year to make a name in the market. Word of mouth advertising works best for my kind of work, but efficient social media advertising also helps. I handle everything myself, from client visits to logistics and planning to actual dog training. You must be self-driven if you are an entrepreneur. I advise my clients on behavior modification, aggression consultation, and even pet travel requirements when owners go on a holiday. Every day brings new challenges as no two dogs are alike. Dogs are creatures of emotion and need to be handled with great sensitivity. My biggest challenge is to teach owners how to communicate with their pets. And the joy of seeing well-bonded pets and owners is unparalleled. It was good I listened to my instinct and opted for a career change. There is no looking back for me now. You now have 10 seconds to check your answers. Task 4. You will listen to two students, a boy and a girl, talk about tigers and how to save them. Read the statements below, then listen to the extract and complete the sentences using one or two words only. You will hear the recording twice. You now have 30 seconds to read the questions. Task 4. I watched this film called The Truth About Tigers by a wildlife and conservation filmmaker. Oh, what was it about? It was really revealing about the odds stacked against our national animal. It had a lot of footage from other wildlife cinematographers and experts. Oh, but I thought a recent study has revealed that the tiger population which was around... 1,706 in 2010 is now around 2,226. That may be, 
But everything's still not so rosy. The filmmaker's clear purpose is to highlight what tigers need in order to survive, the exact reasons why they are disappearing, and what one can do to improve the situation. Right. So it gives us direction on what we can do as citizens. Exactly. The film opens with this stunning visual of a tiger stalking a deer in the tall grass and the lethal pursuit. Magnificent. And while it goes on to capture all aspects of a tiger's life, from birth to adolescence to territorial behavior, mating, old age and death, its heart is on the tiger's greatest enemy, man. Yes, that cannot be ignored. Remember what happened at the Sariska Tiger Reserve in Rajasthan? I think it was in January 2005 that we woke up to the headlines that there were no tigers left in Sariska. And it was all blamed on poaching. Yes, I remember that. The film showed piles of tiger skin, bones and sharp swing out portions of tiger organs in many Southeast Asian countries. People are prepared to pay enormous amounts for these, you know. Yes, that's why those criminals are a law unto themselves. They have enough money power to hire lawyers and escape punishment. Exactly. It seemed so futile to relocate tigers into Sariska and hope they would survive. But they did, you know. By 2014, the census revealed that the tiger population at Sariska had gone up to 13, with seven females, two males and four cubs. Really? That's so heartening. So, what was the final message of the film? The mantra was, we can do it together. We need to make it a collective effort. Every adult and child must take ownership of this noble task of saving the tiger. Yes, that's the only way forward. Some simple but effective solutions include writing a letter to the chief minister of your state about the problem and asking for more measures to protect tigers and their habitat. Sharing information with friends, parents and the neighborhood helps achieve another objective of raising awareness on the tiger. Right. The film also advocates people to be watchdogs around forest areas and be aware of activities around them. We need to sound the alarm if we see or note anything amiss. Yes, that will be really effective. Finally, as part of educating citizens, the film exhorts field trips into forest to know ground realities. Apparently, organizations like the WWF and nature clubs conduct field trips to sanctuaries and tiger reserves. It's important we participate in them and keep ourselves well informed. Absolutely. Nothing like being there and seeing for oneself. Now you will hear the recording again. I watched this film called The Truth About Tigers by a wildlife and conservation filmmaker. Oh, what was it about? It was really revealing about the odds stacked against our national animal. It had a lot of footage from other wildlife cinematographers and experts. Oh, but I thought a recent study has revealed that the tiger population, which was around 1,706 in 2010, is now around 2,226. That may be, but everything's still not so rosy. The filmmaker's clear purpose is to highlight what tigers need in order to survive, the exact reasons why they are disappearing, and what one can do to improve the situation. Right. So it gives us direction on what we can do as citizens. Exactly. The film opens with this stunning visual of a tiger stalking a deer in the tall grass and the lethal pursuit. Magnificent. And while it goes on to capture all aspects of a tiger's life, from birth to adolescence to territorial behavior, mating, old age and death, its heart is on the tiger's greatest enemy, man. Yes, that cannot be ignored. Remember what happened at the Sariska Tiger Reserve in Rajasthan? I think it was in January 2005 
that we woke up to the headlines that there were no tigers left in Sariska. And it was all blamed on poaching. Yes, I remember that. The film showed piles of tiger skin, bones and sharp swing out portions of tiger organs in many Southeast Asian countries. People are prepared to pay enormous amounts for these, you know. Yes, that's why those criminals are a law unto themselves. They have enough money power to hire lawyers and escape punishment. Exactly. It seemed so futile to relocate tigers into Sariska and hope they would survive. But they did, you know. By 2014, the census revealed that the tiger population at Sariska had gone up to 13, with seven females, two males and four cubs. Really? That's so heartening. So, what was the final message of the film? The mantra was, we can do it together. We need to make it a collective effort. Every adult and child must take ownership of this noble task of saving the tiger. Yes, that's the only way forward. Some simple but effective solutions include writing a letter to the chief minister of your state about the problem and asking for more measures to protect tigers and their habitat. Sharing information with friends, parents and the neighborhood helps achieve another objective of raising awareness on the tiger. Right. The film also advocates people to be watchdogs around forest areas and be aware of activities around them. We need to sound the alarm if we see or note anything amiss. Yes, that will be really effective. Finally, as part of educating citizens, the film exhorts field trips into forest to know ground realities. Apparently, organizations like the WWF and nature clubs conduct field trips to sanctuaries and tiger reserves. It's important we participate in them and keep ourselves well informed. Absolutely. Nothing like being there and seeing for oneself. You now have 10 seconds to check your answers. That is the end of the test.